that this was introduced as a regular course for all these students of 500 colleges, you know, 500 professional colleges, mainly the engineering, MBA, MCA, like that, in Uttar Pradesh Technical University from 2009 onward. So, 500, 500 colleges covering almost around uh, more than a lakh students per year. So, 2009 it was introduced to them. And then 2011 it was introduced in Punjab Technical University, which includes another 325 engineering colleges. In fact, you now, in 2009 it was 500 colleges, now it is more than 700 colleges. So 2011 onward it is introduced in PTU, Punjab Technical University. 2012 it is introduced in Himachal Pradesh Technical University and Andhra Pradesh has a technical university called Pral Nehru Technical University. So like that you know it has been introduced in around 6 universities which is covering around 1500 professional colleges and almost 2 lakhs students per year. So that is in the area of uh, higher education. And the second part which is, you know, this trying to uh, think in terms of redesigning the whole uh, curriculum on the basis of this understanding has also somewhat, you know, started uh, taking place because most of these professional colleges who are teaching this course, okay, they are now coming to realize that many of the concepts which they are passing on to the students are not falling in line with this. Right? So some of the issues we discussed in between you know, this, <coughs> this economics you are teaching <coughs> of unlimited wants and limited resource leading to deprivation and this, you know, the limited <coughs> needs and possibility of having more than what is required in nature leading to prosperity. Now they don't go together. So then you have to probably revisit it. Similarly, this issue of management by relationship and management by opposition or domination. So you'll have to revisit that. So this is being felt now. Okay. Some of the faculty members you know, have started working on it <coughs> as to how to redefine you know, that approach. But the major part is still <coughs> related to the first part, that is introducing it as a course right, to all these students you know, along with whatever they are studying right, in the area of engineering or in the area of management or in the area of you know computer application and things like that <coughs> even pharmacy so this is about the higher education in the primary education and the secondary education we have made some systematic effort the, you know, in the state of Chhattisgarh, which, you know, coordinated from Raipur, which is the capital uh, of this Chhattisgarh. So, the syllabus for class first <coughs> has been developed. The books have been written from first to eighth, okay. In fact, the book from first to eighth, fifth has been published by the SCRT, uh, the State Council for Education Research and Training. And it is now being experimented with some 30 schools. <coughs> and finally, it has to be implemented in 30,000 schools of Chhattisgarh. So, Chhattisgarh it is one of the small states <coughs> in India, and it has got 30,000 schools. <laughs> so, that is the size <laughs> we have to deal with. Right. <coughs> so, but. We have started, you know, with a kind of experimental basis with this uh, 30 schools. So after this pilot <coughs> project is run, then finally it will go for this all 30,000 schools. So this is the kind of effort that is being made, you know, at the level of education and sanskar. <coughs> and what we are trying to do now, at the, you know, the possibility which has opened up in uh, Bhutan now. Can, you know, we can see that I had already described that January 2012, that is this year, 6th to 8th January, was the first time when Thindaji came 
you know, to Triple IIT Hyderabad and he could, you know, kind of get some feel about this, you know, in the three day seminar. <laughs> and then, uh, kind of, group of people came for the workshop in, Tripla, in, in IIT Kanpur in May 2012 and then Hyderabad and then finally IIT Kanpur and so on. So, by now something like 70 people have come from here to India and have gone through this process of people's education program. Okay. And we recently had two small three-day workshops here, Gedu College and CST. And then uh, this month we are having three workshops, one at ACC as I mentioned, one at Paro College of Education and this eight-day workshop here. So that's the kind of effort which is made here in Bhutan okay, in terms of people's education. But in this short period of eight months, okay, there is a strong <coughs> you know, need felt by those who have undergone this process that it must be made as a part of the education. So as far as the university is concerned, this Royal University of Bhutan is concerned, we have decided that it will be introduced in all the 10 colleges of the University of Bhutan from 2013 onwards. Okay. No, this is 2013? Yeah, 2013. August session onward. So all the necessary formalities of passing it through the Academic Council and the Board of Studies and all is being done. So this will become a part of uh, this uh, higher education, but some deliberation is going on in regard to introducing it in the school education as well. So that's an in the process. Nothing very concrete has been, you know, done to this state. And the ACC workshop, there was lot of uh, this feeling that it must be introduced to the non-formal education also, uh, because. Uh, it must reach to the common people. And ACC has some awareness program also, other than this non <coughs> education. So they are uh, you know, kind of thinking in terms of bringing the uh, secretary education for the next workshop in Hyderabad. Particularly, Ashwan Nitin is you know, very you know, enthusiastic about it. So she wants to bring her along and then. Uh, if the secretary technique, uh, secretary education is in need of it, then introducing <coughs> both at the level of you know education, uh, the primary, secondary education, and also at the level of non-formal education. So that's in the process, <coughs> and that is where we are. We thought that this workshop we had kept particularly keeping in mind that you know. If it has to be given a la, you know, wider exposure, okay, then we must call the people related to education, you know, the higher education related to primary education, right, and particularly the people who are involved in the process of <coughs> making the policy and implementation of it. <coughs> so, uh, I think in that sense, this workshop has been quite useful. The Minister of Education was also supposed to be you know, uh, in this workshop, but for some reason he has not been able to come. But I think quite a few people have come from you know, different areas. Okay. These are the list of organizations, almost 14 different organizations are here. Okay. They have been given this exposure. And what has been the outcome of this? is what we will listen from you, right? What you have understood, what importance do you see of this and how you, you know, uh, intend to take it ahead is what we will listen from you right, tomorrow. But our impression of whatever interaction has taken place in the last seven days is that this message has been conveyed this process of self-exploration has started in most of <coughs> you. And you, you know, many of you have expressed 
the need that must be taken forward. Okay, and some of you have also, you know, kind of given your commitment okay, that you would like to participate in this process in your own way, you know, whatever contribution you can make. So in that sense, from our side, we feel that the workshop has been successful and it has you know, met with the purpose with which uh, it was uh, decided to have this workshop. But exactly what has been the uh, your achievement and what is your feeling and what you would like to do in the future as a follow-up of this will be what you know, we will hear from you tomorrow. Yeah. So, two important things which um, we have been discussing and uh, which is uh, slowly taking shape is that, you know, we feel that, you know, all these things okay, must be done by the people, by the people of their society and their country and you know, their nation. So our role, you know, we see is to prepare the resource person okay, who can do it in their own place. <coughs> so <coughs> in the first session, first workshop in, uh, not the first, this is the third workshop in uh, <coughs> July when Tindaji had come to Kanpur. We said that we must focus on preparing the resource person for Bhutan. So some 10, 15 people at least must be prepared to do this work in Bhutan. And our role would be mainly to prepare them in the process. So after that, three people have already volunteered for it. Uh, who want to prepare themselves as the resource person. Right? Sindhaji being one of them, then Soji Wangchuk and the uh, director of ILCS, the Lungthen Gastroji. So three people have already volunteered. So what we are planning to do for uh, with, uh, this thing is that this is the first level of workshop, right? the first level introductory workshop we have. We have also the second level and the third level of workshop. Okay which is meant for those who have undergone this and you know, have been reflecting upon this and <coughs> certain level of you know, understanding and the you know, uh, kind of practice has been reached. So with them we are planning this second level of workshop. So we have one in October in, some, uh, in which uh, some, 20, uh, some 10 people from Bhutan are coming including Shindaji and this, uh, Doji Wangchuk from NITM and then Dumtenji is coming. So that's one thing that we are uh, in the process and I think it will take some two, three years to you know, get this 10 source person, 10, 15 resource person prepared. The second uh, thing which we thought uh, after the discussion with the participants in the room of these people is that it must be translated in a native language to begin with in Jonkha and then later on in other uh, kind of native languages. So some effort is already made by some of the teachers in Gedu College in terms of translating just the you know, <coughs> presentations. First day presentation we had on this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So this translation was done and the presentation was made to the students okay. and the response of the student was quite warm. So it gave a feeling that yes, this can be communicated in Jyongkha. Lumitenji who is looking after this language and culture in institute is also keen. So we have one person from IOCS, Karma Engine. Who is also well versed with Hindi and Sanskrit okay. and with Jonka. Uh, so, to kind of make some progress in, in this area. What we feel is that if we uh, kind of translate it in the native language, it will be much easier you know, for people to you know, kind of understand and multiply. 
this burden of some kind of foreign language is very difficult to carry. Lot of energy is spent in the language itself. So <coughs> that's the second thing that we are you know, thinking in terms of, and some effort has already been uh, made in the uh, process, and uh, quite a few people are keen on doing this. And not only Jonka, then later on we'll have to probably do the translation in some other two, three languages because it seems that something like four or five languages are very common in different parts of the Buddha. So that's what is uh, also being planned and being processed. Anything else? <coughs> <coughs> And I think with this ACC workshop and this workshop, I think many more you know, ideas are going to come. You know, many more people are also going to come forward. Okay. Uh, in this ACC workshop, quite a few people were there. The commissioner from election commission was there. Commissioner from the civil service, Pritam Pathan was also there. Then the registrar of the uh, Royal Institute of Management, uh, he was there, and so this uh, registrar of Royal Institute of Management was also there, and other people from uh, this non-formal education, the Ministry of Education, some of the councillors were there. So all of them strongly felt that something needs to be done to make it a part of their you know, process. So all this has happened. Let's see what uh, comes out of this. But my evaluation or our evaluation of you know, the scheme is that in eight months the progress has been <coughs> faster right, than we had expected. So that is about the time. <coughs> the uh, uh, estimates, you know, a very conservative estimate about how much time will it take if we go about with this. Okay. So I want to give a very conservative estimate to give you an idea of what is the time order of time involved. So, if you go by this process of people's education for now, okay, our expectation, expected time is 100 years. Okay. And the basis of it is that we presume that it takes 10 years for a person to develop right understanding and right feeling and live with responsibility. Okay. So, if that is the time taken is 10 years and in next 10 years he can make 10 people have this right understanding and right feeling. Then in 100 years, <coughs> 10 billion people will have the right understanding and right feeling. Okay. So this is 1000 crore. So we have only 700 crore people. So all these 700 crore people can be taken care of in 100 years. If you go by this conservative estimate, that even if it is not introduced in education in Sanskar, and we are making one-to-one -one effort, and one person is taking 10 years to develop this right understanding and right feeling and live with that understanding, then it will take 100 years. And if you look at a civilization, right? And the years is not a very long time. What do you think? For a civilization, hundred years is a very long time? No. So this is the conservative estimate of how much time will it take if we go by way of education, you know, people's education. But what we are finding that that is not, you know, where you will stop, right? Those who have some feel of this right understanding, okay, 
and like living, they immediately start thinking in terms of education and sanskar. And I you know, told you about the example of Bhutan. So if that happens, it will take 20 to 50 years. Because then you are not multiplying 1 is to 10, right? You can multiply 1 is to 100. <coughs> so instead it will take, you know, half the time. So 50 years, right? If you multiply faster, then it can even be done in 20 years. This 20 years is one generation, right? So your education, you know, and some scar, if it is set right, then it will take, you know, roughly 20 years for one generation, you know, to go through this education and take the responsibility. So this is the time requirement of 20 to 50 years. And if it is taken right at the level of society, if the policy decisions are made, right, in favor of this, then it may even be taken care of in 10 to 20 years. So that is the order of time, you know, scale, which will be required. So if we go by way of people, it may take 100 years. If we go by way of people, education, plus education, sanskar, it may take 20 to 50 years. And if you go by way of this, you know, policy decision at the level of society, then it might be realized in 10 to 20 years. But this is about the whole world. If, it, if you look at it at the level of Bhutan, for example, it must be some 10 to 30 years. So 10 to 30 years of time will be required. Because the number we have is very kind of small, very defined. Okay. And therefore to reach to this, to education and sanskar is not going to be a very time taking. So this 10 to 30 years is the required time. So that's about the time estimate, right? How much time would it take for it to be there you know, with the whole world? And how much time it might take for the Bhutan? So this is an outline of the program of action which has to be done at the level of society. Okay. <coughs> if there is any specific question on this, we can take it up. Otherwise, we'll you know, uh, <coughs> further expand this. You know, what we are doing in the name of education and SCAR program, that is introducing it as a course you know, along with the other subjects. There we would like to discuss in more detail about you know, what are going to be these steps. That is important for most of you, you know, who are coming from these colleges where this course is being introduced now. That we will discuss. But before that, let's see if there is any question on what we have discussed till now. After hearing from you the groups that uh, are likely to be covered and kind of preparation we are going to to introduce this uh, element to Bhutanese society, I think we may have to start uh, thinking about uh, introducing in our local gov uh, local government. Uh, organizations. That is the biggest one, 290, 205 guilds, uh, what we call it. And uh, if the three volunteers like uh, Dr. Pema Chile, Dr. Dojong Shu, and Lume Lungten comes up, if some element of those can be considered during the training, because we are talking about through schools only, but if we have to achieve this 10 to 20 years time, 
we may have to rope in these uh, communities which are very vital for us to disseminate, disseminate this information to the public faster. This is my personal view. Second thing is uh, most probably it must be heavy. Uh, if this uh, news or some kind of information can be shared to the general public or to the education educated floor in the form of magazine, in the form of a newsletter uh, that uh, five or six colleges can come together and consolidate their ideas and decide on to inform. This is how we can bring in the people. So this is basically to accelerate the process of getting the people on the main board. Otherwise there will be differences in understanding and implementation will be a, a difficult task. Attacking people on the educator cloud and leaving behind uneducated class. So we had uh, put him on board. This is uh, what I call it. And coming back to your Chhattisgarh project on the primary level, uh, what is the time frame like for experimentation? Because, uh, in Bhutan, we introduced in early 80s uh, reform called NEP. And uh, we evaluated after 15, 20 years, that came quite reversal to what we intended to. Because uh, we have to make sure that uh, whatever we do in the school is correct, uh, properly invent, uh, evaluated in, in some appropriate intervals. Not having at the end of the day saying, look, this was a mistake, now we will go back to. So we do not want to fall into this kind of a situation in the trap. So I, for myself, wanted to know when you implement 50,000 as an experiment, what is the term like, what are kind of people are involved, and who prepares the materials, evaluation, if it is left to the state government to do it. Basically it will come to whole India, right? Your aim is that way. But experimentation is in one pocket. And uh, what I feel is that if you try to nationalize the whole thing, right from north to the south, what would be the implication like in implementing? Because one sec sector will be way, oh, sorry, one state will be way in advance if it is accepted. The other nation or the uh, state will be left behind. So I was thinking in a balanced way, if we think that after a certain period, if it is good enough, then it's better to give it to the rest of our country. And this is how we should draw this experience for implementation in the yeah. In this higher education, we are, uh, we are evaluating it almost on the semester basis. That is, uh, you know, this, at the end of the semester, what has been the observation, observation change in the teacher? Because the first entity is the teacher. Right? So what is the change in the behavior of the teacher? Change in his relationship with the students? Change in his, you know, kind of uh, sincerity with which he is teaching the course and so on. So this we are almost doing it on a semester basis. Then also changing the behavior and the attitude of the students. We are not we have not done it uh, with every student, <coughs> but an overall you know, kind of evaluation we are making. And also, you know, change in the culture of the institute, the organization that how it is reflecting in terms of the culture of the organization. So, that kind of thing we are doing you know, for the higher education. For this primary and secondary education also, the targeted period is one year. So every one year, it is being evaluated. 
you know, the change in the behavior of the students and the change in the behavior of the teacher, you know, the discipline of the college, maybe even the academic you know, performance <coughs> in the college. So you see it can be done you know, on a yearly basis. And then, you know, 